Here at electrifying.com we have one simple rule, and that's that we will test anything that comes with a plug. And actually, it's not a particularly hard rule to stick to. And yet I've got a car here that doesn't burn petrol or diesel or LPG. In fact, it hasn't got an engine at all. It produces nothing but water from the exhaust pipe, but it does have batteries and an electric motor, but no plug. The office is going to be furious. This is the new Toyota Mirai, and it's an FC EV, or fuel cell electric vehicle. This, my friends, is a hydrogen car. Whoa there, internet. Now, I do have to say that up front because there are a lot of very passionate and educated people who love alternative fuels and will be hitting our comment section, which I welcome. But first, I've got to try and explain how a hydrogen car actually works. And luckily, Toyota's Mirai is a slinky new one. I say new one because this Mirai is actually the second version. Toyota has been messing around with hydrogen fueled things since way back in 1992, although the only one you could really buy as a normal person was the last generation Mirai from 2015. And look at this one. It looks like a perfectly normal car. It's actually quite swish. There's no great big bits of technology sticking out of it or massive hazard symbols anywhere. But actually, I need to get on with this bluffer's guide as to how hydrogen actually works. This is the science bit, so concentrate. A pure electric car is about as simple as it gets. You take electricity, either from renewable sources or from more traditional power plants, and lob it into the car's battery. That battery stores energy that is then used to drive an electric motor to take to the shops or to work or Alton Towers. Simple. A hydrogen car is a bit more complicated. You use electricity to compress hydrogen, the most common element in the known universe fact fans, into a liquid which you can then put into tanks in the car. When you're driving, that hydrogen is passed through what's called a fuel cell, which takes oxygen from the air and combines it with the hydrogen in a chemical reaction that produces electricity and water. The electricity is stored in a smallish battery, which drives an electric motor, which moves the car. Water falls out of the bag. Sort of simple. In fact, a hydrogen car actually pulls in polluted air and strips it of the bad stuff, so it actually vacuums the air locally which is a nice thing to be able to say at a dinner party. But still more complicated than a pure electric car, right? The Mirai actually has three hydrogen tanks. Yes, three. There's one lengthways under the spine of the car here, which is a really big one. Then there's another one crossways under the back seats, and then a third one that also sits crossways under the boot. But do you know what? Once you're in here, you wouldn't really notice because it's just a moderately spacious, nice saloon. It's rear wheel drive, and it actually has perfect 50-50 weight distribution, so it drives really nicely. It actually feels quite big, but weirdly sporty, even though it's only got 180 brake horsepower and gets from zero to 62 miles an hour in a leisurely nine seconds. But actually, there's just an electric motor doing the work, so it drives just like an electric car, because it is. There's no gurgling or weirdness or feeling that there's loads of chemical reactions going on. It's dead normal. Actually better than that. I think it's really nice. It's also pretty lovely inside. I mean, it is quite Japanese, but I quite like the funky arrangement. The gear stick is this little knob here, and you get this 12.3 inch touchscreen, which is really nice. There's another digital display in front of you. It does have all the toys. It's got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, the sat nav, heated everything. Um, it's got a really nice JBL stereo system, so, you know, it's, it's fairly luxurious. And it doesn't feel, you know, weirdly cramped because it's got all that stuff stuffed into it. It's also genuinely interesting to drive a hydrogen car. It gives you this sense that you, you're developing the future, that something in your brain is quite attracted to the idea of alternative fuels. You can get 19 or 20 inch wheels and there are all sorts of options. So you can have this car pretty well spec. From full length glass sunroof to auto park and head up displays, this is the most expensive 65,000 pound car and it's got absolutely everything. As you probably would expect for 65 grand. The funny thing is, the last generation Mirai was quite angular, looked quite strange. It was also front wheel drive and packaged completely differently. This new one 
is very slippery, it's very aerodynamic, it's lower, a little bit wider, and it's also rear wheel drive. So they've changed all of the packaging for this generation because they wanted to get that slight increase in efficiency across the board. And where the first generation was actually a very expensive car, this new one across the board is 20% less money. It doesn't make it cheap, but you can see that Toyota is really trying to make hydrogen work. Toyota's actually taking the lead in something that hasn't immediately got a sales proposition. But why go to all that trouble instead of just making a battery electric car? Well, hydrogen cars do have some advantages. One, you can fuel them in about the same time as it takes to fuel a normal petrol or diesel, about three to five minutes. They have a similar range to a traditional car, and they're much more energy efficient than petrol or diesel, as well as being way cleaner at the tailpipe. Plus, you can move hydrogen about and store it, something that's a bit more difficult when transporting electricity without power lines. The problem is that developing hydrogen cars isn't cheap, and storing it takes a lot of effort. There are also very few public hydrogen refuelling stations globally, and that's not to mention the fact that while this is all going on, you might as well just stick the original electricity into a car's battery in the first place. Hydrogen is also quite explodey. But I'll tell you what, I've been looking at the specs of the tanks that hold the hydrogen in this car, and I guarantee if you crash hard enough to puncture one of them, then you'll probably be pate anyway. And also, we've been driving around in our cars with bags of petrol under them for about 50 years, and nobody seems to make a big deal about that. After all, petrol is quite well known for going bang. That's the point. But making all this stuff work properly and safely is not the work of a minute. And yes, it's still incredibly niche, and that makes it expensive. The Mirai starts about £50,000 and for the one that we've got here it's about £65,000. And don't forget, if you don't live near a hydrogen fueling station, well you could be a bit uh, stuck. My feeling? Well, hydrogen is really good at being moved about, more so than batteries, and for things with really regular journeys. So it works well for big stuff like ships or trains or buses or lorries, things that can have big tanks and do the same things a lot. So you can just put hydrogen refuelling station at the depots they all end up back at. But functionally, the Mirai proves that it can work in a passenger car and really, really well. OK, so the infrastructure isn't at the same level as electric cars are at the moment, but covering all of our cleaner fuel bases can't be a bad thing, even if it hasn't got a plug. What are your thoughts on hydrogen? Worth investigating or a bit of a dead end? Please do let us know in the comments and let's see if you guys think it has a future. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe so that this website has a future as well.